Control X automation platform now supports CODIS's soft motion. In this video, we'll give an overview of soft motion, then drill down on particular features of its robotics library. Soft motion is a fully featured path planner for IEC 61131-3 PLC applications. It supports basic single axis motion with blocks for enabling axis power, point-to-point -point positioning, jogging, or velocity moves. It also supports synchronized motion, including blocks for velocity and position-based gearing modes and electronic camming. CNC functionality is also supported. Blocks for reading and interpreting NC files are included, as well as an associated interpolator. The focus of this video is the robotic functionality, which includes blocks for basic robot handling and coordinated positioning of the axis groups. The robotics library contains many predefined kinematics that may be used with minimal configuration. These include the four-axis palletizer, the six-degree-of-freedom articulated robot, the two-axis H-bot gantry, two- and three-axis SCARA, plus third-party configurations. The popular three-axis delta robot is also supported both in linear actuator and rotary actuator form. It's also possible for users to support their own mechanical geometries. Here we show a common two-dimensional parallelogram type actuator. The rest of the video will give an overview of the steps required to create such a user-defined kinematic, including the steps required to integrate the new functionality into the kinematic selection wizard shown here. Additional detail is given in the document that accompanies the video. First, we see a preview of the mechanism in action. All moves are commanded with the MC move linear absolute block that was shown earlier. Notice that in our simple example, we can adjust the blending radius and the corner points of the path on the fly. To create the user-defined kinematic, we define a function block that implements certain interfaces found in the SM3 transformation library, one of the components of the soft motion package. In our case, we implement MCKINREF SM3, which requires that our function block include methods axes to Cartesian, Cartesian to axes, as well as property num axes. We'll consider these methods in detail later. The second interface, ISM Kinematic with Info, requires that we support some additional simple methods that provide information to the core system. See the CODIS's documentation for more information. The function block inputs allow the user to configure the linkage lengths. The attributes shown allow us to customize the kinematic selection wizard. For example, attribute SMKIN param range allows us to limit the allowable input values for the given parameter. Attributes SMKIN axes and SMKIN lib doc are required to allow the system to hook our function block into the kinematic selection wizard. Note that in our case, the kinematic supports two axes, X and Y.
Finally, note that the comment header is written using a simple markup format called restructured text, giving us control over how the function block documentation is presented in the wizard. Notice that we may include images in the documentation. Next, we consider the two transformation methods in detail. Axes to Cartesian defines the forward kinematic. We are given the joint angles, shown here as theta 1 and theta 2, and we must calculate the corresponding tool center point. We begin by calculating points t and w using the standard sine and cosine functions. Next, we calculate point E by finding the intersection of the circle shown. Finally, we calculate the tool center point by considering the similar triangle shown here, essentially scaling by the factor L2 over L3. Cartesian to axes, the so-called inverse kinematic, is handled similarly. In this case, we are given the tool center point and must calculate the corresponding joint angles. We calculate T by finding the intersection of circles based at the robot origin and the tool center point. Next, we calculate E by considering the similar triangle shown, this time scaling by the factor L3 over L2. Next, we calculate W by finding the intersection point of circles based at E and the robot base. Finally, we calculate the joint angles using the arc tangent. We've glossed over the intersection of circles problem, but we'll return to that point later. Once the function block methods are defined, we may add an axis group based on our kinematic. First, we add an axis group object. Then from the wizard, we select our kinematic. Next, we define our linkage lengths and map the required axes. Note that the axis group object name is referenced directly in the PLC code. The user is not required to instantiate the function block separately in the PLC application or register it explicitly. We'll end the video by returning to the intersection of circles problem. We take a geometric approach which naturally distinguishes between the left and right hand solutions. First consider the triangle shown here. We calculate the length of line segment L using the standard distance formula. And note that we can calculate the cosine of angle theta using the law of cosines. Next, we calculate the intersection of segment L with the first circle by considering the similar triangle shown here. Finally, we calculate the left-hand solution by rotating the segment shown in orange counterclockwise by angle theta. The right-hand solution is calculated similarly, rotating instead clockwise.